Okay, so today is a very special day. I'm interviewing someone who is an absolute veteran in the import-export space. He's been training import-export companies for 40-something years. He's worked with the UN. He's an incredibly celebrated figure. And right now I'm in London. You can see, I mean, it doesn't look great, but that, that's just London, right? And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to go off and meet him. Let's go and see what happens. So, so how many people have you actually taught how to do import export over the years? Yeah, thousands, thousands, thousands. And then how many of them have gone on to, to actually start businesses? Um, most of them were already in business in companies that import export. Okay. And most of them were companies that wanted to start importing and export. Okay. So I set up thousands of import export departments in companies wow um yeah yeah uh, and that is since 19 1989 1990 wow so 30 30 some years and 35 years um and then i don't know my name got around and people start ringing me and saying could you write courses for us and then city university contacted me a professor murray rang me and said uh, we're doing an mba on international trade could you write part of the course and deliver it mm. which i did yeah so i used to go down there every monday to do a three-hour lecture and then another university cottoned on to me um so i used to do that um and it snowballed and um, one day, I, I forget where I was, and I was sitting in a hotel, yeah. and uh, somebody came over to me, it's before mobiles, <laughs> and they said to me, uh, you want it on the phone? And uh, it was this woman, a dear friend after that, and said, my name is Boylan, I'm from UNHCR Geneva. Uh, we've heard your name being mentioned, could you come over and have a chat with us? And that lasted... Uh, I don't know, eight, nine years, and they just used to send me all over the world. So where was the craziest place you went? Um, Can you even talk about it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would say the crazy. I'll tell you the most wonderful place I've ever been to. <laughs> okay. Um, Djibouti. Djibouti. Djibouti was the, the most memorable place there because... Um, that lady I was telling you about, Boylan, her husband was in, um, he was in the French Foreign Legion and he was stationed in Djibouti and he invited me to the mess for dinner. Okay. And uh, it, it was just so unbelievable. All these flags around, all the battles they fought. Mm and all these legionnaires sitting around, you know, and you, as a kid you always think the Foreign Legion, you know, and there I am, and I'm sitting uh, as a guest of theirs, and um, a little a Scotsman about my age now was serving me, and he said he's been in the uh, French Foreign Legion since he was a young boy, and they never forget you. When he retired, they kept him on as a cook. Very good. Very good. Um, and it was a wonderful place, wonderful, and you know, we, <laughs> we went, his wife and I went to a nightclub one night there, and her husband told us, don't go, because <laughs> the troops are being paid tonight. Okay. And there's going to be pretty heavy stuff going down. Do not go. And of course, we go. <laughs> so we were in the middle of this massive brawl, absolutely massive brawl. Uh, with the DJ egging the guys on and all, right, okay. all the um, French Foreign Legion guys. They were all about, I'm guessing this, about 18 to 23. And it, they were all Russian skinheads. Yeah. Okay. You know, and they're all nasty little kids. And beating the hell out of one another. <laughs> and we're under a table <laughs> and bottles going. And that was the best place ever. Okay, very good. That was, that was wonderful. And then the certain countries I would never go back to again in, in okay. Africa. And what's that? What, what was it? Well, I don't think I should say it. You know, it's not <laughs> nice. It's not nice. Okay. Um, but going back to it, um, yeah. 
the import export training that you've done for over 35 years yes you, you've you've taught a lot of people like probably thousands of people like as you said yes what are the kind of key mistakes that a lot of people make um especially in import export companies that perhaps are already doing yeah you know a bit yeah. of operations what are the key yeah. things that they yeah. might mess up on that you you have to kind yeah. of reteach them yeah okay um in a company yeah in an export import department the greatest mistake a company can make is they employ somebody who doesn't have any experience yeah but they say well you don't need experience because we have a freight forwarder okay and i talk as an ex freight forwarder here i'm not belittling the trade but the freight forwarder smells blood and they know they can tell that company anything and they will believe it because the person they're talking to is not trained right and the greatest mistake is not to train your staff to talk the talk with the freight forwarder right. or a shipping line that's the easy that's the fundamental mistake and i could give you okay i'll just give you one example Yeah okay. Um a company who makes um a product world renowned product and they it's made in China. It's a private company. And they import from China. So freight forwarder walked into them one day and said, "We can do we can air freight your stuff in for you." And said, okay. Tell us all about it. They said, "Well, here's our rates." Printed rates you never vary them and every time we uh, you have a, a thousand kilos all you have to do is go down a thousand kilos 7 pounds 50 kilo you know exactly how much you have to pay for it the staff had no clue they they right. were you know that yeah. so they said yes great great that's good so no variation no variation <laughs> to see yeah so <laughs> anyway um the managing director a lady in her 70s at the time as she said to me said you know i'm not stupid Alan. i didn't get where we are today a leader in the field in our product in stupid and said i thought hang on we know nothing about what this guy is doing yeah we better get somebody in and trace so anyway i was in there for about a week yeah and uh, we were going through and i said now can i have a look at your freight rates please okay And they said yes. Uh, Mr. Bleak kindly gave us these freight rates, and he was charging them full IRTA rates, which only the village idiot would take. <laughs> you know, literally the village idiot. So, how much money were, was it costing them every single year? Well, every con- uh, well, let's let's work it this way. They were charging from memory. Mm-hmm. The freight forward was charging. Seven pounds twenty a kilo. The consolidated rate that I could get them was seventy two p a kilo. That's ten times. Basically. Yeah. So they were. They were and they were ten the, times more. And they were getting a ton in a month. What this freight forwarder said: bring it in from mainland China yeah. in bits and pieces, which he was right. Okay. To our warehouse in Hong Kong. We'll consolidate it into a ton. Yeah, into a pallet, right? A um, couple of pounds in yeah, their okay. case, into a ton, and charge you for a ton. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good, <laughs> rather than little bits. Um, so when I went into the MD's uh, office, we were going for lunch. He was inviting me out for lunch, and I said, "Before you spend money on lunch <laughs> for me, I think you should know something, <laughs> in case you can't afford to uh, pay for my lunch." <laughs> you know. And she said, "Well, what is it?" And I, I told her, "I said, you know, you're paying seven pounds twenty, whatever." and uh, the freight forward is buying it for 72p right right that's crazy but he's charging you full ir to rate and she was very soporific she didn't go oh i kill him and she said i was right out we don't know what we're doing right okay so as of tomorrow he's gone you know can we sue him? I said, i don't think so offer an acceptance mm. you know i'm no Solicitor, but if if you say to me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do that for seven pounds fifty, and I say yes, 
it's a contract offer and acceptance. I said, I doubt it, but you can always consult somebody. Um, so that strengthens my argument to you when I say, what advice would I give a company? Train your staff. Train your staff so they can talk the talk. Right. And in many uh, occasions, you can dispense with a freight forwarder and go direct to the, the shipping, shipping lines, lines etc. Yeah. So yeah, train your staff. Train your staff. And don't penny pinch by mm. getting some unskilled person in, saving yourself a couple of grand a year on salary. Yeah. And trust me, freight forwarders, they smell blood. Right. And you're more or less inviting them to be nasty. It's now, true. if somebody, it's if a freight true. forward was listening to this, he'd say, no, that's a load of rubbish. unfair. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Look at the gray hair. Trust <laughs> me. Been there, done that. Yeah. You okay. know, and um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Sure. Uh, get training. Um, know, talk, be able to talk the talk. Yeah. Keep abreast of freight rates, etc. And, you know, you, you, and what used to bug me is, and I used to say it to managers and directors, if your staff walked up to you and said, I'd like a thousand pounds rise this year, yeah. you'd say, we can't afford it. Yeah. But you've been ripped off. Right. Thousands and thousands by this company. Yes. Where and that's per month, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And that slowly compounds yeah, that's, to that's maybe six figures. Yeah. You know, so, um, and they would say, oh, well, it's different. It's not different. It's not different. If somebody wants a thousand pounds raise or two thousand pounds raise, and you say the company can't afford it, but you're throwing money away through bad management, through no training. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, and um, many companies still exist where they're so anti training, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, they call people like me pariahs. You just come in to get money. Yeah. Yeah, you say, okay, I'm not twisting your arm. You know, if you don't want me, you don't want me. Right. And how you many know? times have people come back to you after, you know, they've thought about getting training? Maybe someone in the team has said, oh, yeah, let's get training for yeah. our export team, our import yeah. team. Yeah. And then the management come back to you and they're like, no, no, we, we don't want to pay two thousand pounds or one thousand um, pounds not infrequent I can but imagine. it happens the other way around i, I was dealing with um, one company and uh, world uh, I, I can't name companies of this way that that would be unfair <laughs> but it, it, a massive massive company yeah and um how many employees did it have in England, I would say on site where they were, they were on a, they were a manufacturing site. Guessing, uh, I'd say there must have been about at least a thousand. So altogether. a thousand just in the UK, so it's yeah, multinational oh, yeah, corporation, oh, yes. very big. Oh yeah, right. yeah, 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 at least. And um, I was picked up by the uh, HR guy from my hotel in the morning, a young guy. And uh, we're sitting and he's driving, you know, and he said, you know, you're making history, Alan. And I said, why? And he said, you're the first outside trainer this company has had. Wow. Now, this is, we all know the company. We see the names all yeah. around the place, right? And jokingly, I said, I said, no, he said, I've just become the HR director for this company. I've just joined this company. I said, I can't believe it. What they do is they say, why spend money yeah. on some outside guy like Bracken when old Joe, who has been with us for 28 years, can train the young people? Well, I personally call that incestuous training. All you're doing is passing on bad blood. You're passing on my mistakes to Another guy. You don't know what you don't know, right? You need a person that's neutral to come and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That's not best, best practice. Yeah. But if you're in a job for 35 years and you're doing the same thing and you're training innocent little boys and girls that are coming in to do the same rubbish you're doing, 
and you don't have an independent. So, so I, I said to him, ah, incestuous training. And he laughed. He said, oh, I must remember that one, Alan. He said, yeah. He said, you're the first one. I said, I had to fight to get you in here. Okay. It was on letters of credit. He said, I had to fight mm. to get you into this organization. They do not spend money on training. It's crazy. I think so it's the same thing with software as well. Um, sometimes sure. they're happy sure. to have their sales reps um, in their company just scour Google for, for leads, yeah. right? And the thing with Google is some of the largest importers, distributors in some very large companies all over the world, they don't have any online presence. The only way to actually find them is yeah. through import-export data. Yes. And um, this is the thing that people do not understand. Yeah. Sometimes the cost of, you know, our software, it might seem like a lot a year, yeah. but if you have a sales team that could potentially, you know, there's 10 salespeople, but you could actually work with only five, you've saved yourself hundreds of thousands a year because salespeople are expensive to close deals, right? Yeah. A lot of the time, yeah. are they yeah. even that good? Yeah. yeah. And you used to, used to be almost the sales guy for your freight forwarding company. So I'm sure you did some sort of sales training with the export team as well. Uh, for a well, not years. really. No, 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 no. no. Um, the only people who will not attend um, any of the training I did are salespeople. Okay, how come? I don't know. I don't know. It, it says I'm I'm going back now. I haven't trained a salesperson for at least 10, 12 years. Wow. But I always found that salespeople, and I had salespeople on my team yeah, yeah, when I had yeah, yeah. a freight forwarding business, but I always found salespeople, um, they look upon it was a waste of a day coming in, and, and they'd sit there tapping their pens or <laughs> one another, or trying to chat up the girl, mm. you know, down the road. Um, no. Salespeople would not attend, and they always made an excuse to leave after coffee break. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could even do this. Ten minutes time, he's going to get up and walk out because it's coffee break, and you never see them again. Do you not think it, as a sales rep, do you not think it is actually beneficial to understand the export process? To because talk, to talk, of course. Because the documentation yeah. for import, the, yeah. you know, whether it's the BL, whether it's yeah. the certificate of origin, yeah. whatever yeah. it might be. And it, it, it's quite interesting. I speak to a lot of export sales reps, especially because yeah. we work with Turkish companies. Yeah. And those guys know nothing. It's, it's worrying, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it's just like... <laughs> You go to university to yeah. become a neuroscientist. You yeah. go to university to, you know, become a psychologist. There's so many different professions, yeah. accounting, whatever. But when it comes to sales, yeah. um, there's no real degree in sales, yeah. is there? No. And no. the thing is, there is a way to talk to customers. There's yeah. a way to understand. And yeah. I think that's something that people don't really invest in. You know, it is a skill being able to speak to people, isn't yes. it? Very much so. Very much so. And I mean, I don't mean the domestic salesman. I mean the overseas salesman. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, you know, if they walk into an office in Dubai, yes, and, and the guy is, is wants to talk freight, what they do is they will say, "Okay, hang on," and they get on. Um, I'm sitting in uh, Salmon's office, and he wants to. The deal could be cold by then. You've got to be able to say, "Ah, oh, okay, what well, twenty foot box?" Well. well from Felixstowe to Dubai, the current rate is such and such. Yes. For an FCL, it's because of, but obviously I check on it for you. Yeah. But if a customer says, well, what is an FCL rate? And the, the rep goes, Duh. no, you can't do yeah, that. I know my product, but I don't know <laughs> the rep. You know, and <laughs> everything goes down. You know, yes. it, it's, um, it's your street cred. Mm. It's your street cred, and um, particularly for salespeople. But no, no, salespeople, and this is just my experience, salespeople, you have to drag them in to that room like you drag your kid to the first day in school. Wow. Kicking and screaming, they hate it. Um, and I've actually had to ask several salespeople to leave the room. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Well, because crazy. every time I'd say something, yeah. they'd snigger and whisper to their colleague. That's, that's absolutely You know, absolute 
horrible. And it's, it's costing companies so much money because it, it's not just um, the customers that they speak to. It's also when you reach out to customers and you know the, the opportunity cost essentially, right? And yeah. like the, you, the more efficient you are, yeah. The less you have to do volume that, that's something i really believe in right you know we have a lot of sales people like oh it's just a numbers game yeah <laughs> and yeah okay maybe but at the same time what if you could increase your close rate yes. and you could double it so every single time i have a meeting 50 yeah. percent chance i'm going to yeah. close the deal yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. that that, yeah. that costs just imagine lead costs just think about you know the travel if it's in, in an international deal like you yes. know, go visit someone yes because you know especially um this is one thing that i've noticed with younger people in the game import export have you noticed this where there's that inability to pick up the phone you know they just don't want to pick up the phone they don't want to cold call people um they don't want to go and meet someone in person and i think especially in international trade it's a big problem because that's where trust yeah. is built right yeah 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 it, it's uh, and again i don't want to philosophize and talk through my head about all this but yeah i, I do think one-to-one -one contact like you and i now has gone people do not know how to conduct themselves one-to-one. -one. Um, they're afraid, they, they just don't have the ability to do it. I'm, I, I'm not saying this is a grumpy old man. I, I, I'm saying that as a fact that young people cannot uh, find it difficult to express themselves socially and business-like one-to-one. They can do it wonderfully on a computer and they can, they can all sit around and they can have um, a, a, a meeting, a virtual meeting. And they can, what they love about virtual meetings is, and I, dis, I find it disgusting, they will get up and walk away. You see, you, I can't, well, you could walk away from me now. Yeah, I'm really but, scared. Uh, yeah, but it would be, it would show very bad manners of on course, your part. Yes, absolutely. But you can walk out of a chat room. And I find when I'm training online, a lot of people can't interface with you and they walk away. They just walk away. Yeah. So they're losing those skills of being able to sit and talk. Make eye contact. And too, make right? eye contact exactly, yeah. um, with somebody over a coffee or whatever it is. And I don't know about the social life. I don't want to go down that road. But um, I, I think it must be very stressful for young people nowadays. I think it is. I think you it know, is. Uh, and, and that's one thing um, I remember uh, doing a, a course for a, a Chamber of Commerce quite recently. And I'd only about five or six people from the company on there. And, uh, you know, I'm chatting away there, and they're all down there, and they're all... And this woman kept on just walking away. That's just crazy. walking away. And she wouldn't even say, excuse me, Alan, the cat got stuck in the door, or, you know, I must go to the loo, or yeah. I want to cough. She'd just walk away. Yeah, it's insane. And I it's thought, insane. well, they must project this in real life. Then how do they get on on the personal? Do you know what? I think people online nowadays, they have too much confidence, right? So people are just... They'll say the most yeah. on social media. They'll say the most on a Zoom call. They'll hang up on you. <laughs> you know, they'll be horrible to you. But when yeah. you see them in person, they're quivering in their boots. And yeah. it's it's all to, you know, yeah. talk the talk online. Yeah. But yeah. you really walk the walk. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something yeah. that, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm, you know, just, it's just nothing to do with the, the interview, but I have to uh, be an angry old man for woman. There's one word in the English language I cannot get my head around and really annoys me is when somebody says they're an influencer and they're like 20 years old, old and they're an influencer. And I say to my partner, um, who, who is younger than I, and she's of that, you know, more age bracket, and I said, well, the heck at 20 can you be an exactly. influencer exactly i can't be an influencer and i'm 82 <laughs> i'm still learning exactly. but but that's one word that um they will tell you you know uh, they're an influencer okay they sell handbags and they do makeup so they can influence you to buy that mm. but it's one word in the english language that should be banned 
it shouldn't be allowed. Okay. Influencer. You know, that's interesting. <laughs> it's the same thing with me because I'm 25, right? Hmm. And um, I think a lot of people my age who are in B2B businesses yeah. uh, where they're selling, um, it's important to come across as an expert, right? Especially yes. in your field, whatever you yeah. sell. But one thing that I try and do in my content is not say that I know it all because yes, I do not. Because I'm 25 does. years old, right? I know a lot about what I do, but to say that I know everything about import export is a lie. Yeah, we've, we've, done, we've got some amazing results for some companies. I can say from my personal experience yeah, what we've done, yeah, yeah. but can yeah. I say that I know import yeah. export to the level that, you know, even the most, the veterans do, because even they say, right? There's like that, that curve, right? Where in the beginning you think you know everything, yeah. then you know, you learn a bit more and then you're like, I don't know nothing. And the and more then... you learn, the less you know. <laughs> exactly, it's exactly. It's true. It's, it's very exactly. true. You yeah. know, you're, 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 you're saying to yourself, uh, actually, I was reading an article on my phone a, a few days ago about Shepo. And I thought, I never knew that. Crazy. I never knew that. Yeah. You know, it was a wonderful written article. And I thought, wow, wow. there's something, you know, you learn every day. Yeah. Um, and I suppose another thing is, if you don't know, say it. Exactly, exactly. You know, uh, and don't pretend you know. Particularly, I, I found that when we left uh, the EU and Brexit, and I, I was getting non-stop uh, messages and phone calls. Oh, what, what, what's happening? Uh, you know, what's happening? when is Chief going down? And uh, have they changed Chief? And, you know, uh, when CDS coming up, and I used to be honest, I don't know. Yeah, I and that's really okay. I don't know, but when I do know, I let you guys know. But you know, it's no use pretending, you know, because Absolutely. once you're caught out, that's it. All your trust goes. All your trust goes. Um, nobody wants to know. Absolutely. And you know. kind of talking about that, I'm, I'm just really curious because you said you've worked with some very large companies and they've trusted you. What are some of like the biggest companies that you've worked with, like some really well-known companies that uh, like maybe you could uh, maybe mention? What's it? Um, um, well, I, I worked with uh, again so many. I, I can't even think of. Okay, for like in the under, London Underground, you'll see a plate on the uh, on the tube itself, uh, Alstrom, they make all the undergrounds. I work for Alstrom. Okay, and how big is that company? Oh, I don't know, thousands and thousands. thousands, and thousands. thousands. Yeah, yeah. Um, I worked for um, the Look to Havland, the, down in Yeovil, they, they make the Apache helicopter. Um, I did a heck of a lot of training uh, with the purchasing officers. Wow, Apache yeah. helicopters. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, that was the coolest one because <laughs> the first Apache helicopter, man, I think of the, the company name, um, the first Apache helicopter came off the production line the week I was down there. Okay. And uh, we went in for a, a morning uh, training session. And one of the buyers said to me, Alan, we're going to uh, be out of here in about an hour's time. Um, with a lot of dignitaries coming in, etc. Et anyway, long story short, we all went out. Every member of the company went out onto the field. All aircraft coming in. Wow. All dignitaries coming in, blah, blah, blah. And then two pilots walked across the tarmac, got into the first Apache uh, manufacturer down there wow. in Yeovil, took off. And we were in a line, maybe half a mile, yeah. a line, and it went along the line, bowing to us. And the gun was going like oh, that's that. Crazy. So like a it was you... wonderful. Crazy, wow. It was absolutely so atmospheric to yeah. see this thing bowing to us and to the workers who built it. That's crazy. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, um, a very anyway. interesting career that you've had then, you know, you worked for the well, UN and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it had yeah. its moments and it had horrible moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I started first, and I used to uh, always make sure that mobile traffic, my customers' mobile traffic, got on a vessel, a Roro vessel. And uh, sometimes I'd have to go over to Antwerp. Um, uh, 
uh, I'd be shipping our Caterpillar tractors usually, or dump trucks, and uh, I'd go over with an extra set of keys in that in case they were lost. And I'd be on a dock side at say three in the morning. Oh God. And I'd be scared. You yeah. know, I'd be fairly scared. Well, what were you scared of though exactly? Well, I don't know, just the darkness and you know, you're all by yourself in this strange country on the dock side. Well, and, that, that, that's the, you know, the other side of it. Yeah. Traveling to places that you've yeah. never been to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember when we went to, my brother went to China. Yeah. Nobody speaks English there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, his phone didn't work. The yeah. internet didn't work so yeah. there is like a dark side of yeah, um, yeah. trading and all yeah, that so yeah. but so, yeah. that used yeah that used to uh you know if if i was on the quayside at three in the morning i, I kind of um i said oh, i really don't want to be here you know i don't know that and i did a lot of training in china in mm. beijing yeah that was for uh the television manufacturers Livono, Livono, whatever they I, are yeah sure. yeah they're big big people Okay. Um, yeah, I did um, a lot of um, training with them on the European market and okay. uh, importing into sure. there. They, they were really nice. So some very big companies. I think yeah. we're coming to the, the end of the interview. I'm not sure how okay. long this went, but it was yeah, yeah. Yeah, very interesting yeah. uh, speaking to you. I think the final thing that I want to ask you yeah. is, um, there's a lot of people who are in import, export, logistics providers. What would you say is the main takeaway that you've had from such a long career in the space? Like, what would you say is the biggest thing that you would say to someone who's in import, export, um, just anything? Like, what would you say is okay, the main uh, thing? Like a private person going into import, export. Yeah, and they want to start a business. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what would be the final thing you say is okay. kind of like an ending? Okay, well, first of all, I would encourage them. Yeah. I would say, go for it, go for it. Yes, it's a wonderful career, go for it. And what I would say in, in two words, market research right okay too many people have a dream i want to import widgets from china because yeah. they're going to sell like mad and they never sell it yeah okay do your market research and be truthful to yourself with the results yeah if they become negative believe it and don't believe your mom and dad who says son they will sell and you'll be a millionaire one day, you know. So I would say going into business on your own, a realistic approach, market research, and above all, get your cash flow together. Right. That That is, you know, if, if you haven't got, which nobody has nowadays, if you haven't got a piggy bank with money in it, if you haven't got a, a, a bank manager, if there is such a thing nowadays, or a sympathetic loaner, it's very, very difficult. Mm. It's very, very difficult. Otherwise, so I, I would say market research yeah. and cash flow. Right. So look at the data. Yeah. They won't lie to you. Yeah. And I assume probably big companies do this when they get into new products as well, right? Yeah. They don't look at the data, they just think, yeah. This will work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. no, it's it's like buying that cup, and you say, "Wow, this is a beautiful cup. I can get these in China." Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, who else is importing them into the UK? That's where you come in. Yeah. How much are they importing it for? What margins can I make on this? Yeah. Can I penetrate the market with price, mm. with service? What can I do? Um, what kind of arrangement for credit worthy, uh, credit wise can I do with the manufacturer, yeah. if I can? All of those little things, rather than um, daydreaming, you have to daydream, of course, but a realistic daydream. Yeah. yeah. Market research, cash flow. Brilliant. No, thank you so much for all okay. of this information. I, I guess, where can people find you? Um, where, where well, they, they can still get me on our website, abtslogistics.co.uk. Okay. Um, they can always hear. And um, if they have little problems or if they want to discuss anything with me, um, they can. we've got to contact us. They can contact me. We can arrange a phone call uh, on WhatsApp free. Great. Don't charge. Free. And... Um, take it from there but uh, mainly now at my age um, I, I'm, I'm in it 
it sounds rather pretentious this, but I'm in it to help people. You know, because I always say to people, at 82, if you haven't made your money, forget about it. <laughs> you know, it's a bit late. <laughs> it's a yeah. bit late yeah. to try and make money at 82. Um, you know, I, I'm quite content with my life. And I, I really, truly do want to put something back in. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for okay. those wise words. Yeah. Just a final thing, just yeah. it's quite curious. You've lived quite a long life, right? I'm, I'm 25, you're, you're much older than me, uh, with, with respect, of course. Um, is there anything you regret in your life? Uh, lots of things. Um, if you could just think of one thing. One thing I regret in my life, um, not being a better father to my children. Interesting. That's very different to your business, I guess. Is yeah. it maybe because your business took you away from that? No, 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 no. It, 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 um, I don't know. I, um, I just think when I look back uh, uh, at my children and my grandchild, and I think, oh, I wish I was a better father. I didn't renege them. I was a good father. <laughs> but I wish I was a better father. Fair enough. That's, well, I, I think if I, if I could lead my life again, I'd like to be a better father. Well, if they're watching right now, I'm sure they, they can understand. Well, I suppose so, yeah. Um, I if they do, so. but yeah, no. Um, but business-wise, absolutely no regrets. I, and I love that. Thank you very much. <laughs> absolutely. And um, yeah, really appreciate your time okay. today. And uh, I appreciate say thank you, you guys coming all the way down. No, to see thank you, thank you. I really do. Yeah.